talk about brown. He goes by a few different names, such as umber, sienna, and ochre. But these aren't simple aliases. Each color looks slightly different, and they all have very natural tones you can find in clay, dirt, and tree bark, making them vital for landscapes. And you can find them on the color wheel if you know where to look, because the first twist of the day is that brown is in the family of orange. A lot of people don't realize that, because brown is one of those colors nobody notices unless they want him gone. Which is sad, because mixing brown can be an art style all its own. Brown from a tube can be flat and uninteresting, but you can create your own brown by mixing the primary colors together. Or, to think of it another way, by adding complementary colors like green and red. You're using the same pigments each time, but in different ratios, and that will give you slightly different colors. This is fantastic because it lets you match whatever main colors you have in your palette. By mixing your own brown from colors you're already using, you can make one that blends in better with your artwork. Let's look at Monolith and Trees by painter Thomas Fiernley. Looking at it, you realize it's a picture of a large brown rock. Okay, but up close and personal, you see the brown contains lots of green and red. I don't know if Fiernley mixed the brown from scratch or if he personalized an umber color, but he must have added some red and green to create such variety within the rock's surface. Here's another of Fiernley's works, an escarpment with tree stumps, Romsdal. He's still using red and green, but in a different way. Instead of mixing the complements together, he layers them one over the other. Where red goes over green, it comes off as more of a brown, even next to the highlight of a very earthy yellow. And where green is layered over red, it appears dark and neutral. These different shades of brown all support Fiernley's subjects with interesting, very natural browns. The trouble comes when you rely too much on pre-mixed brown and don't do anything to tailor it to your art piece. I'm not saying buying a tube of brown paint is lazy, but buying a tube of brown paint and adding it to the canvas without making sure it supports the rest of your color scheme is. This is how we get flat browns, browns that look out of place because they have nothing to do with any of your other colors. Brown is a wonderful neutral color that calls us back to nature, but neutral doesn't have to mean flat or boring. By mixing different colors to tailor our browns to each piece, we can breathe life back into this otherwise basic color. Thanks for watching! Leave your own topic below and stay tuned for more Art Bites.